What do you think happens when you have that attitude? You will be bad. You will not succeed. You will be terrible forever. But what if you believe you can actually get better? What if you believe that you, you are doing some things well? What if you start to develop a bit of self-confidence? The way you think about things is so important because it creates the foundation or the framework for everything else that happens, right? If you think in the wrong way, if you have the wrong attitude, you can be running on a treadmill and not going anywhere, not really making progress. So I want to really spend some time on this. I want to really talk about how to develop a successful learning mindset. Now, as I was planning this and preparing it, I, <laughs> I came across a bunch of quotes from Confucius. And Confucius, famous, famous Chinese scholar who has contributed so much to Chinese culture. I'm sure, I'm sure you know who Confucius is. I came across these quotes that perfectly complemented what I was planning to talk about. So I didn't originally plan to include these Confucian quotes, but I'm going to put them in because I think they fit so well with my points. But my points weren't following the quotes. I made the points that I want to talk about and then, whoa, realized there's a quote from Confucius for every single one, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the primary, the main things you need to do to develop the right learning mindset so that you can be successful so that you're not wasting time. We'll go through five of those and with each one we'll have a quote from Confucius to look at kind of eh, for fun but also I think it can provide some insights. Then I will have a challenge for you something that I want you to do to actively start thinking about how you can begin to build your successful English learning mindset. What's the difference between mindset and attitude? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's a difference. I don't think there's a difference. Okay. So first, we'll start with the quote. The man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for life. This is a great, great quote, I think. Now, put aside the man part. <laughs> Often in especially older English stuff, uh, things are always the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man. That has more recently in the past, maybe, I don't know, 50 or 70 years become the person, right, instead of the man. But you still see a lot of the man in things. So anyway, now that means... Well, what do you think it means? It means if you ask questions, you're admitting a little bit of ignorance, but that is allowing you to go deeper into something, to find something you never thought of before. And really, it's about curiosity, to have curiosity and be willing to maybe look silly for a moment to explore something new is what allows you to gain in understanding, in knowledge, in wisdom, in general, right? If you never ask questions, if you're never curious about anything, how much are you ever going to improve? You'll be a fool for life. I really like that. So developing curiosity, number one, curiosity. To actually wonder, what is going on here? Why do people say this idiom? Why are there these weird exceptions in pronunciation? What is going on? And maybe there is no reason. But just wondering why allows you to notice more things, learn more deeply, ask questions, right? And genuinely learn something, right? And to do that, you really have to step out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is the thing that makes you feel safe. Oh, I, I know what I know and I'm good at what I'm good at and I don't want to make myself look stupid. I'm afraid to ask questions because then I'll look dumb. As Confucius said, don't worry about looking dumb. If you look dumb and you're not afraid of looking dumb, that's an opportunity to grow. 
if you're curious all the time and you always wonder about things, why is it this way? Why is it that? Number one, learning is a lot more fun. And number two, you gain so much more from the learning process instead of just mindlessly saying, number one, number two, number three, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go play video games. That's not a great way to do it, right? And having the courage to step out of your comfort zone is very important. And it's different for everybody. Maybe for you, that's public speaking. Maybe for you, that's speaking in general. Maybe for you, that's learning a little bit about good writing. What's the difference between good and bad writing? Maybe for you, that's learning how to learn vocabulary. You've always done it with flashcards and it's not working. Well, step out of your comfort zone. Try it a different way because there is a better way, right? Okay, now, number two, if I, this is a famous, perhaps one of the most famous Confucius quotes, and I'm not crazy about this translation. This is just one of the ones that uh, I found online, but eh, we'll go with it. If I am walking with two other men, each of them will serve as my teacher. I will pick out the good points of the one and imitate them and the bad points of the other and correct them in myself. This is a really good one and I think it highlights an important thing about the mindset problem when it comes to learning. And that is we often close ourselves off to the others around us and we often close ourselves off to maybe different ways of doing things. Uh, you see someone who does something so differently from you and you say, well, that's crazy. I do it this way. Well, if you were a little more open-minded, you might realize that you could actually learn two things from that person. You don't have to learn everything from them, but they might be your teacher in some way. In the same way, just like this Confucian quote says, the bad points of the other and correct them in myself, you see three things that that person over there is doing wrong. And you realize, oh, geez, I'm doing the same thing. Oh, no, I'm just learning and never having any output. When I'm practicing vocabulary, I just memorize, memorize, memorize. And I never actually write a sentence down on my own. I never actually make anything with what I learn. And then you see someone doing it, and it's, it's easier to tell when someone else is doing something wrong, and it's harder to notice it in yourself, right? But when you see someone else doing it, and you say, oh, look at that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Idiot. <laughs> Maybe that's a little strong. And then suddenly, ah, oh, I do that. <laughs> and that's, a, that's, a, that's then a moment to use your surroundings as learning opportunities. So be open-minded, accept that the way you do things is not always right. You could be very wrong about how you're doing things and about what you know. Maybe you learned something in middle school about English and it's been wrong the whole time. Be open to being wrong, right? And also accept the possibility that you can learn something and it doesn't have to make sense right? If you ask 99.9% .9 of native English speakers how English works, why is it pronounced this way? Why are there these irregular verbs? What is going on with punctuation? Why is the comma there? Why, why, why? They'll say, I don't know. I don't know. I just know it's right. Why is that? Well, because the, that's how you learn the language naturally, right? Well, that means that you don't always have to find the explanation. It's more important to learn the thing, right? Learn how it works, learn how to use it. Once you know that, do you really need to know why? Does everything need to make sense? Do you have to know the origin of every single expression in English? No, you don't. It might be interesting. Maybe that's fun. Maybe you like that. Good for you. But you don't have to always understand the reason. It doesn't have to always make sense. Be open-minded about that. Also, as Confucius says, everyone can be your teacher. So pay attention to your surroundings and look for things about others in yourself and look for things about others that you don't have that you might learn from. Okay, number three, the man who thinks 
Confucius loves men. <laughs> he loved to say the man. The man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can't are both right. Ah. Now this sounds a little cheesy, perhaps, right? But I think this is so important. The successful English learners that I meet and that I work with tend to have one very important trait in common. They don't say, oh, my English is so bad, I'll never improve, I'm so terrible. Uh, this attitude of always being defeated, always being bad, always focusing on the negative. What do you think happens when you have that attitude? You will be bad. You will not succeed. You will be terrible forever. But what if you believe you can actually get better? What if you believe that you, you are doing some things well? What if you start to develop a bit of self-confidence? Well, if you start to do that, you might begin to build some momentum. Hey, I'm really growing. Hey, I'm improving, right? Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't notice what you're doing wrong. It just It's all about how you feel about it. This is not about noticing things. This is about how you feel about how you learn. If you feel positive, optimistic, I can do it, I can achieve it, then you're more likely to, right? Your attitude dictates what will happen. Have some self-confidence. If you do something well, you take the IELTS test, you thought you were going to get a 6 and you get a 6.5. Celebrate your success. Can you do better? Yeah, you could get a 7.5. But don't say, oh, I only got a 6.5. Oh, no. Right? Celebrate your successes. Oh, look, my writing score is a lot higher than I was expecting because I did X, Y, and Z. That's great. But look, I need to improve my listening for sure. Right? Don't, though, avoid criticism. And don't allow it to affect your confidence. You can take criticism as a tool for improvement, right? If you go out there and you're worried about what everyone thinks of you, then it's going to be really hard to build up the confidence every time to speak, right? If you go around thinking, if I say something, then I'll be wrong and others will criticize me. Even if they don't say anything, they will be criticizing me in their minds. And that's bad, <laughs> right? If you go around thinking like that, you're never going to build that confidence that you need, right? And if you're afraid of, for example, people co correcting you or things like that, that's all going to beat you down and make you lose your confidence. You can be confident and accept feedback and at the same time make mistakes without worrying what people think. Don't worry so much about what people think. Nobody really cares how terrible your English is, okay? Everybody's terrible in some way. Don't worry about it. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares more than you. I've said that before, but that is really critical to remember. And I think just general, in general, always tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I'm going to succeed. I will get there. I have confidence no matter how hard it gets, okay? Number four. Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's the one's there instead of a man's ignorance. Great. So this is also the Socratic ideal. Uh, very famously, Socrates was walking around saying at least, well, he was questioning people and trying to figure out what wisdom was. He then concluded that he was the wisest person in Greece because he knew at least I know that I don't know anything. <laughs> Everyone else thinks they know stuff. At least I know that I don't know anything. <laughs> so that's an extreme case, but it sets up an example that, you know, uh, it's good to know what you don't know, and knowing what you don't know can give you insights about maybe what you can do next, where you can go next, what you can learn next, right? Now, this is not to cancel out what I was just saying about confidence. Again, that is all about how you feel, not what you do, not noticing things. Noticing things, that's an objective process. Feeling disappointed or feeling confident, those are subjective 
those are about your emotions, really, your mindset in regards to your emotions, okay? So if you have the awareness to notice what's going on around you and what you're doing compared to everyone else, you're going to develop a superpower to improve much faster. If you never notice anything, you're never going to improve in that respect, right? So you need to develop a kind of another person inside of you. And the other person is a noticer person. And this person is objective, meaning they just see what's really going on. And this little voice in your head tells you something is not right with that. That doesn't sound the same as what you're trying to do. That sentence is not clear. It's more objective because often we're, well, we're always living inside of our heads and it's easy to kind of get used to just the way things are. But if you develop this awareness person inside, they can look at, for example, what you're modeling. They can look at what's correct. They can start to notice differences between what you're doing and what you're trying to do or what you're modeling or what you're looking at as a good example, right? And that could be for pronunciation, it could be for writing, it could be for grammar. So if you speak a sentence, right, are you noticing that you're using tenses incorrectly? And often it's stuff that you already know. You know how to use the ing when you're talking about things happening now, right? Uh, I am walking my dog, right? Well, then you probably also know that it's not natural to say, I walk my dog, if what you want to say is that it's happening now. But you say, I walk my dog. The, the little person in there says then, oh, ooh, hey, you know that that's not right. They notice it, they're aware of it. And then, oh, you, you say to yourself, oh, right, ah, uh, yes. So it's a tool a way to be objective, to notice things and make corrections, right? And it also helps you uncover things that you're not aware of. If you're actively trying to be objective, if you're actively looking for things, you might, for example, say, oh, wait a second. Well, you're listening carefully to a section of speech and you're trying to model it or shadow it, right? To really copy the sounds. When I speak, I'm talking like this with every word isolated. But when they say it, it sounds like this with every word connected together more naturally. Okay, what is happening there, right? All you're doing is noticing things. And that's such a simple, obvious thing to say. But so often I find learners who are not making progress are not able to notice things. And then you just fix it, just correct it. Don't say, I hate myself because I didn't do it right. Just fix it. And don't get stuck with the emotional part of that. Push the emotions away. Fix the problems. Find the problems. Fix the problems. And then just move on with your life without thinking, oh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm bad. Right? Not good. Not good. Okay. Finally. And then we're going to get to a challenge. Okay? Last one. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do, and I understand, oh, this one is so good, right? And again, I was so amazed that I was able to find these quotes that fit perfectly with what I wanted to share in regards to mindset. Well, what does this mean? Yes, input, great, wonderful, beautiful. This is input right now, right? But we're going to have some output right hear and forget see remember okay i don't think that's as important as the last thing i do and i understand only by practicing output creating making things do you really learn things anything you've ever learned in your life you learned it by doing something you didn't learn it by just hearing it unless it's a simple fact right like how tall is mount everest i actually don't know and i don't care but if I want to learn a skill, you never learn it just by watching a video about it and saying, got it, now I'm good at it. It doesn't happen like that, right? It takes action. You have to do something with what you learn passively. 
Passively, you take in information, that is input. Actively, you must make something, that is output. Because without making something, you can't ever do anything. You can't, you can't achieve anything. You can't get good at anything. Imagine reading a book about public speaking and saying, all right, well, I'm a good public speaker now, fantastic. But then someone puts you on a stage and says, go. And you, your knees start knocking together. You start trembling and shaking, crying, <laughs> right? Yeah, because you don't have practice. Well, you could work your way up to being on a stage in front of 200 people, but it will take effort, practice, and a plan. So make a plan. Okay, here's my goal. This is what I want. Make a plan. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z two weeks in a row. Okay, great. Be consistent. Don't give up. Don't get too excited about it that you do it for three days and then quit, right? And just remember that, you know, it's so important for this to happen. And for some reason, when it comes to English learning or language learning in general, we forget that. We fall into this idea that input is the only thing you need. But for so many other things that you learn, that's not the case. It's only somehow for language learning. We just say, okay, okay, I learned the word because someone told me what it means or I looked it up. No, you don't know it until you can use it in a sentence without thinking about it. Until that happens, you don't know it, okay? So very important. Action is critical extremely important. All right. So now we've covered five things that are crucial, very important for developing a successful learning mindset. Now, we talked about curiosity. We talked about open-mindedness. We talked about having self-confidence. We talked about awareness, being able to look around and notice things that you didn't notice before simply choosing to do that, how important that is. And we talked about action, the importance of doing something already. Okay, now, what should you do next? Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? I want you to go through these five things, and I want you to actually take some action here, okay? Number one, what are you curious about that you want to spend more time exploring? Have you thought about that? Think of, and it's, curious means you want to know that, not boring things. What are you curious about? And I think it would be best if this is in relation to your English learning goals, okay? Number two, name someone that you plan to learn from and explain why you chose them, okay? Why did you choose that person? Is it because uh, they do it really well? Is it because they're a good teacher, right? Choose someone out there who can be your teacher, right? And if it's a bad example, that's fine too. If you want to choose a person who's a terrible example and you learn what not to do from them, oh, that's fine. I'm okay with that, okay? Now, we want to celebrate successes. So what have you improved over the past year? Think about how far you've come. Are you, is your pronunciation better? Is your grammar better? Did you learn 500 words? What's better from last year? until this year or for the last year, the most recent year, okay? What is your biggest area for improvement? What do you need to focus on next? What is the critical skill that you need to be working on? If you wanna choose two, that's okay, but I would say just pick one, pick the biggest one, the most important one, okay? Then, what are you gonna do about it? That means what steps are you going to take? Make a plan, make an action plan. It can be very simple, can be bullet points. I want you to put all of this together and I want you to send it to me, okay? I would like to see it, okay? You've had the input, now it's time for some output for you to think about what you're curious about, to think about who you could learn from, think about how far you've come, think about what you really need to improve next and how you're going to do that. Okay, and if you put it down on paper or <laughs> uh, in a text, you write it in some form, that's very powerful. It makes it real. It's not just swimming around in your head. It's real, right? So very important. Send these to me. I would like to take a look and let me know how it goes. Mm -hmm.